Here's how PayPal cracked down their $100 million churn problem using data and analytics. First, let's define the problem. PayPal loses around 1 million merchants per year, which translates to a lot of revenue. Obviously, PayPal needed to do something to understand and diminish that customer churn. And in this video, I will show you exactly what they did, step by step. Now, if you are a small business owner, or you have an agency, or you have a startup, or even if you are a freelancer, you can copy these steps and apply them so that you can as well diminish the churn of your customers. And I think step number five that I will show you today is one of the most important for every small business. The first part of the process, they narrow down the problem. And in the second part, they implement the specific strategies to diminish customer churn. Step number one, behavioral versus actual churn. You might have a user that hasn't closed their account, but just stopped using the app. In the case of PayPal, they don't have a monthly fee, so a lot of users just went dark. They just stopped using the platform. They didn't close their account, just stopped using the platform. PayPal focused on these accounts that just went dark instead of waiting them to close their account. Step number two, once and dance. Once and dance are accounts that register to your platform, use it for a while for some very specific task and then stop using it. PayPal decided to exclude this account from the analysis as these were small and didn't contribute much to the revenue anyway. Step number three, activation versus churn. Some merchants registered on PayPal but didn't have a good first experience and that's why they left. But this is not churn. This is an activation and onboarding problem and it should be tackled separately. That's why PayPal decided to exclude these from their churn analysis. Step number four, false positives and non-regretted churn. False positives are account that appear to have churned, but then predictably reactivate at a certain time. For example, Valentine's Day merchants, monthly billers, and so on. And what about non-regretted churn? These are accounts that PayPal blacklisted or kicked out of the platform. Accounts that PayPal actually doesn't want to do business with. So these two types of accounts, non-regretted churn and false positives are also excluded from the churn analysis. Step number five is the Reddit principle. After the initial exclusions were made, PayPal team found that 90% of the revenue comes from just 10% of the accounts. So what they did is they decided to focus on these 10% of accounts because they were bringing 90% of the revenue. And these were around a couple hundred churned accounts per year. Those were large accounts that transacted for at least three months with PayPal and that transacted regularly. Now comes the next part, identifying and resolving the problems that led to customer churn. Throughout the years, PayPal had identified the major customer experience killers and have solved them. Now customers churn mainly due to many but small inconveniences that they encountered throughout the platform. For example, they might have bad customer experience dealing with risk, with uh, customer experience or compliance or any other uh, department. And the solution was pretty simple. PayPal identified 20 different scenarios that led to customer churn. Then each week they identify the accounts that fall into one or many of these 20 scenarios and the customer service would reach out to the accounts in order to resolve their problems. Now these accounts didn't want to churn anymore. These were the steps that PayPal used to crack down their churn problem. I think every company could learn from this case and apply the same principles to their own business. Subscribe to this channel as I plan to post such videos frequently on how you can use data analytics in order to solve your business problems. See you. Bye.